Thus it was found written that Mordecai had told, as above. And then, when the, these Gentiles come and find their contradictions to their religion, this produces converts, as, it, it, as is written. And many of the nations of the land became Jews. So this is Rabbi Nachman's proof. Mm. Okay, look at the footnote, please. Um, True Stadik? 90, no, 90. I don't think we read True Stadik. Yeah, it's not really. I mean, you could read it. There is a Tzadik who seeks to reveal the, the beauty. It's part that God takes in Jews collectively as individuals and in the details of their lives. What, what is it? The public? Beauty. beauty. Pe'er. Uh, this, uh, this true Tzadik is the concept of Mordecai who rejects and denies idolatry. True Tzadik reveals that wherever the Torah mentions the greatness of Israel, it is not only the Tzadikim that Torah speaks about, but also all of Israel. For each and every Jew, even if he is a sinner, has his own unique qualities in which God takes his power. Um, this also resolves the apparent contradiction referred to in Note 85. We are not been taught that one who rejects idolatry can speak such words of faith. Yet here, the Rebbe states clearly that the words of faith inscribed in the other writings are those of the Trusadic. From this we see that each Jew, as long as he has a basic belief in God and the Torah, has re he has rejected idolatry, has the ability to speak words of faith, and in this aspect, he too is a Zadik. So, what do we, so, so that's each Jew? What did we get from tonight? So it's every person, every did, Jew. Does anybody believe what was spoken tonight? Yes. I think it's very interesting. <laughs> Tell us the secret. What's the secret? But what did you get from tonight? Do you think it's real? No, no. <laughs> I think it's incomplete. No, it's it's in the it's in the middle of a whole learning. This is a learning that it's ongoing. will take another twenty hours. This is one little thing. And if you want, we could take the next lesson, which Rabbi Nachman says is very very interesting. He says, why does the the Jew's soul get caught up in a non-Jew? How does that happen? So he explains. We'll talk about it in the next lesson if we. Uh, Something very interesting. Rabbi Nachman said it. I'm not saying it. So you have anything, you take it up with him. <laughs> okay. Rabbi Nachman says that whenever a Jew is um, prevented from fulfilling the Torah, how are we doing with the time? We're good. Whenever a Jew is prevented from doing doing a mitzvah that that he should have done, but he can't do it, whether they're the, the king is putting taxes on him or his boss tells him you have to work late on Friday you can't leave early on Shabbos or um, or uh, a, a, a woman's husband is not letting her go to the mikveh is fighting with her or someone can't eat kosher he wants to eat kosher something is preventing him from doing something good in the world of doing a mitzvah that energy that the Jew could have done but was prevented from doing it that energy becomes it's a, it's a, it, be, it becomes the energy of the soul that becomes into the that that the non-Jews take that energy because the Jew could have done it and the energy has to go somewhere he could have done something with that energy Rabbi Nachman says but it wasn't done so that energy goes in, into the non-Jewish world they take it because they prevented him from doing the mitzvah that energy Oh, and they make iPads and iPhones and all I. that. I. <laughs> Rabbi Nachman explains yes. that, that, the, that the energy yes. that the Jew who wanted to, to, to do the mitzvah becomes the soul. That's where he says the convert. The Jew that wanted to do the mitzvah. The Jew that the wanted energy, to do the energy. The energy that the Jew wanted to, could have done the mitzvah yeah. was prevented. Right. That energy doesn't go lost. Right. It says, he, Rabbi Nachman says that it becomes a soul. And it goes to the other side. Right. That's Rabbi Nachman. So, but I'm just giving you a drop in the ocean. You have to take the next lesson. And then that person becomes a convert. Uh, I think the same. So a convert comes from an evil place. No, no, uh, no. It came from a place that wanted to do good. And then became evil and was taken by the guy. It wasn't evil. No, it's not it just, evil. It just, it comes hijacked. It becomes hijacked. It becomes prisoner. A prisoner. He was born so you're saying a past a life, a convert, was somebody who didn't fulfill his potential? No, no, no. no. no he's, not, he's not saying that there was a past life, he's saying there was this energy. It's like, it's like, no, it's like a Jew was prevented from doing the mitzvah. Yeah. The energy that he didn't, that he could have done, that didn't do, doesn't get lost, but it's taken, 
it's taken from it's taken by the other side and that becomes a soul that's in the other side that makes it evil side. that makes it evil if you're trapped in evil dark. it's not evil yes yeah, it's not about the dark side it's not the dark I want to say evil it's dominated by evil no, it's in the, the custody it's of the 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 Myra, Myra's going to explain evil better than me. It's not evil. I hope it was okay. No, it's good. It was but you could take the lesson. You can read it on your own. That's it, honey. That's take it back home. Back home tomorrow. I'm not okay. from here. So. Where are you from? Toronto. So I think that's not contraband. It's not uh, marijuana. You. you could take it across the border. Sorry. Pleasure meeting you. You can take my business card if you want. It's here. And I have a website. ExcitingJudaism.com. And, uh... Thank you so much for coming. Pleasure meeting you. Email me. Say hello. All the best. Thank you. Go Maple Leafs. Uh, I'm not, I'm not into it. I am. When did Judaism become exciting to you? The reason why I started exciting Judaism is because rabbis were ruining Judaism for me. Really? And I knew better because I was brought up around the Lubavitcher Rebbe since 1976, around Breslov, from Rabbi Rosenfeld. I was around Meir Bochatzera, and I knew better. I knew there was a better Judaism than what was being around me. And, uh, and I asked other people to teach Breslov, and some said they couldn't have no time. Some said you have to get me a taxi, and I couldn't afford the taxi. So I said, um, now is it possible that people will never learn this stuff? It's not fair. So I said, let me try it. And that's why I do it, because I want to share what Rabbi Nachman is. So, so, uh, rabbis who aren't doing their job, who are, who are bored of their job, inspired me to, to, to do it. <laughs> that's how I see it. But uh, I don't want to judge anybody. Everybody's you know, doing their best. See, there was this air, that, you know, this, this desire that was just sort of hanging there. Yeah, because I knew so much. So much was not being said. And they weren't saying it, so yeah, but you everybody's saying it on their level. Saying everybody's saying it. He's saying what I couldn't say. I say what I say. He said they're all in one uh, one team. No I in team. <laughs> what else? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thanks Thanks for making it happen. Thanks for being here. All the best. This, uh, this video will be on video on YouTube. At, um, go to YouTube, Rabbi Nachman Learn. Thank you so much.